people, welcome back to the Spider's Web. And what do we have on the table tonight? Well, it's the 12 figures from the Sting of Loth faction pack of Dungeons and Dragons. So let's see what we're going to be painting over the next few videos. We'll start off with the big one. This is the Umber Hulk, as you can see. Hope you can see. I haven't the faintest idea what this guy's supposed to be, and I've missed quite a bit of the underneath side of him with the spray, so I'm going to have to give that another spray over before I start painting him. But he will be the last one to paint, so I'll have plenty of time for that. Next down the chain is the Dryder. Half drow, half spider. Fine figure of a woman. But then again, I would say that. <laughs> Next we have the giant spider. Again, I'm going to have to give that another quick spray. I've not caught bits underneath. I only notice that when I've got the, uh, the lights on them off. Don't notice but otherwise. Okay, now the first of two other figures are the demon web spiders. There you go, let's just show you that one. Missed a little bit on there as well. But. There we go. As I said, I'm going to be working up to some of these, so these ones are going to be the last few that I paint, so it'll give me time to. Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It'll give me time to um, um, spray them before I start painting them. Next, we have our Drow House Guard. Again, we'll get two figures of these. The swords and the shield, the nice spider logo on them. Very nice figures. And we have the Drow Wizard. He's ready for action. Yep. And the Drow Priestess, I think. Yes, Drow Priestess. Clutching her sacrificial dagger in one hand and a freshly removed heart from the in the other. There she is, what a woman. Next we have the Drow Blade Master. I'm showing you the name underneath so you know I'm not selling fibs. <laughs> oh dear. There he is with his long, long and short sword or sword and dagger. Sword and dagger, rather not sword. Sword and dagger. Whatever it may be. Some of these, like this film, is going to, are going to be easy to paint because it's just um, the drow, so they have black skin anyway, and white hair. But then it's just metallics for this fella. Finally, not finally, almost finally, <laughs> this is the drow assassin. long cloak with his hood up his sword just along over his back and his uh, little crossbow there and he 
this figure. Oh, her! I just noticed. He's female. <laughs> Either that or he's got moobs. <laughs> it, no, it's definitely female for this character. <laughs> um, yeah, so there she is. But the first one we're going to be getting over and done with is this fella. He's the Shadow Mastiff. 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 The Drow Doggy. Again, missed a bit underneath, but that doesn't matter in this case because it's it's all going to be fairly dark and just picking out the highlights of the uh, of the mus musculature, as you can see there. And this is going to be one, um, so it's like video where I'll be I'm just going to show him properly how to highlight something that is black. It's usually quite um, a simple matter, but with black to make it look natural highlights, it's uh, there's a lot of mixing involved. And I know a few people who are having trouble with um, highlighting black, so this will do for them. So let's start off, shall we? Right, before we go any further with this man, we're going to get the black out. And we're just going to give it a going over with the Abaddon Black. For the simple reason being it will cover over any areas that I may have missed that hasn't got a good um, coverage of black. Um, it's just to make sure that everywhere is covered. It's very easy to miss something. Especially when you're spraying black over a dark colour. Right, this was like a very dark bluish but it was like the the clear plastic model rather than a proper painted figure and you'll see how it looks anyway when uh, in the vid in the pictures are posted on the title just after the title of the video so you know exactly how it looked before it was painted and now you'll see how I'm going to well, whether you want to call it improve it or not I don't know but I'm gonna I'm gonna try anyway so we're gonna leave that to um, I'm gonna leave that to dry for a few moments and when I come back we'll start on the highlighting okay okay I'm back let's just get ourselves organized now shall we so what we need here is a bit of the old Abaddon Black. Now we want a goodly dollop of that on that. And we clean our brush out and then we want some Bear in mind this is a shadow mastiff so we want some if you still have the old colour shadow grey if you don't still have the old the old colour it's the fang so we want some of that in and just mix that together to make it slightly less black not as pale or as bluey grey as the um, oh dear as the fang colour itself okay so what we're going to do is just go over the top edges of the musculature we're going to leave the recesses Alone. There we go. There 
I'll oh, just dry brush down here slightly. It's not a dry brush, it's uh, a bit more paint on for a dry, than a dry brush, but it will just pick out the highlight or the high points of the fur around its face, and that's the kind of thing we're looking for looking for from this. As I say, we're just picking out the high points of the um, the musculature. We won't be coming back with a paler colour. And we'll go down its back as well. You can, if you wish, just use this as a dry brush and go over, but it's much better doing it this way because you have more control of where the paint is going to be going. If you just, if you quite literally just pick out where you want it to go rather than hope that you've got a small enough amount of paint on your brush in order to dry brush it properly. There we go. And everywhere we think is going to be a high point, obviously. We're going to um, brush this over. So, if you don't feel comfortable, I mean, I'm using at the moment a large brush to do this. Um, if you don't feel confident or com comfortable either comfortable or confident enough to do that then by all means use a smaller brush but I find I can I've got just as good or just as fine a point on this as you can with the smaller brushes it's well not just as fine a point but a fine enough point with this for what I'm doing at the moment I will be changing over to a smaller brush for the next lot of highlights we're doing. So there we go. That's the first lot of highlights on it. As you can see it's looking pretty um, pretty good at the moment. So now what we need to do is add a touch more of the fang to this mix which will make it that much more bluey grey but we're not going to be using that for a lot of it because we're going to be changing now and adding some Dawnstone um, I've not done any more on this, I'm going to have to mix some more paints um, because all that has dried up while I've been on the phone so it's of black. I'm not going to use the um, fang on this one. I'm just going to go black and dawnstone. Let's see if this will make a difference to the um, to the colour enough. I need to add a, a touch of Dawnstone in there, but let's see how we go. I'm going to brush load it up and pull back and give it a twist, and then add it. No, we definitely need some more Dawnstone.
Hope you can see a difference there. There will be another highlight colour after this. Oops. As I said before, I got interrupted by the phone call. The this colour you do not want to completely cover the previous highlights. You want this to be slightly smaller amount. And then I think as well with this, or with the next colour, I think we can just try Dawnstone on its own. go. I'm going to be putting a wash of um, null oil over this as well. If I, I may actually do, oh, I can't remember what, what colour it is, surprisingly not black. Um, oh what colour was it now? Uh, it's not Druichi Violet, Draken, Drakenhof Nightshade. I might go over with a bit of that, which will give it a, a nice bluish tint. And it's just now taking off some of the starkness of the, um, the Dawnstone by mixing a bit at a time of the colour we've just used and for the extreme highlights and this is how we see that we'll look directly down from or we'll look directly from above it and we put it where it's just going to be um, we could just we could see directly above. I'm not okay, I'm not saying this right. You look down above, um, straight down from the top of it, and you put this one where you can see, and you can actually just do this as a dry brush. Because it's going to be um, going to have that dragging off nightshade over it anyway, so it will tie everything down if it does look a little bit stark. Um, but next we need Rhinox Hide. Okay, so why do we need that? Well, this thing's got teeth. So we're going to do the teeth in rhinoxide first of all. Right like so. My do my front door's not closed properly in. Okay, so that looks a bit odd at the moment. But, not to worry, we have something else to add to it, it isn't going to stay like that. But, let's 
Let's just get out the Drakenhof nightshade. There we go. Just so you can see it. I'm going to add this to the entire body. It will make it look similar to how it looked originally, but it will have the, the highlight colours underneath it. And it will blend everything in. So obviously it will stick into the recesses where it needs to. It will still show the highlight colours through. And it will merge all the different layers into one. Um, well, it will merge them in together, soften them up, and I've not done his claws. So I'm going to have to wait until that dries now and do his claws. Grr. I should have thought about that before around, never mind. Um, so, there is the Gravehound. The next time uh, you come back, what I'm going to show you what I'm doing is using the Rhinox Hide, as you can see there. We will go over, I don't know why I've opened that, we'll go over the claws on his, on his feet in much the same way as we have done for his his teeth and the teeth will be dry brushed over with um, screaming skull and then once that's happened we'll give it a wash with that earth shade Ta -da. so that will show the give it like a bone colour or whatever well that kind of effect to it but as you can see there it's looking good already. I say it's just the highlights for, for his teeth and get his claws done. We can base him up and he's finished. Okay, so when I come back, we'll be doing that and then we'll be starting on our new figure. Sorry, not our new figure, our next figure. So, I want your input on this one. Which one? How are we doing? We've got the assassin. We've got the wizard. We've got the blade master. Finally, we've got the priestess. I'll just have to double check on that. It is a priestess. So, which one are we going to do next? The choice is yours. Until then, take care, God bless, and bye for now.